Buddy, my name is Joey Thompson with Colorado Mountain School. I'm an avalanche provider for ARI. And here we are this morning at the Backcountry Access office here in Boulder, Colorado. I'm Dane. I work for Backcountry Access. We're going to go inside here, take a look at the forecast. going to do a little skiing up at Rocky Mountain National Park. Take a look at the avalanche forecast, pull up some maps, pull up some options for the day, and have fun and keep it safe out there. Throughout the season, we are monitoring avalanche conditions in our favorite zones. Pulling up today's forecast in the front range will give us a good idea of what is happening in Rocky Mountain National Park. The first thing we'll check is the elevation forecasts. Today we are seeing high avalanche danger above treeline and we'll avoid any skiing that takes us below or into the high alpine zone. Our outlook is better for the near treeline and below treeline zones where we are expecting considerable avalanche danger. While better than above treeline, we will still need to practice cautious route finding and make conservative flying choices. Next, we'll explore the various avalanche problems that are contributing to the elevated avalanche danger. Our first problem is a storm slab. With a storm dropping nearly a foot of snow over the weekend, many of the slabs are still in the process of stabilizing. Heading into the park, we are sure to see wind slabs in the new storm snow, and we will have to remain vigilant and monitor this problem on all aspects and all elevations throughout the tour. While the potential avalanche size for this problem is on the lower side of the scale, we will likely stick to slopes below 35 degrees of steepness. Our second problem for the day will be persistent slabs that are often found in our continental snowpack. These slabs are more common along aspects facing north through east and onto south at all elevations. This issue will be likely and could result in much larger slides. Our final avalanche problem is the deep persistent slab that has plagued us all season long. This is the monster in the basement that should always be top of mind when considering our trip plan. This problem is mostly present above and near treeline from north to southeast aspects. The likelihood of setting one of these off is possible, but it could result in a very large slide as this layer could be sitting more than six feet deep in the snowpack. We will likely stick to the trees on this tour. Finally, we will look at the weather forecast for 11,000 feet. The temperature is looking stable in the mid-20s, so warming throughout the day will not be an issue. With western winds in the 15 to 25 mile per hour range and likely higher in the park, we will be monitoring the formation of wind slabs on easterly aspects. It is a good idea to record the key details of the avalanche forecast in a field notebook, and this is a best practice that many avalanche professionals incorporate into their daily routines. At the very least, it is a good idea to carry the forecast on your mobile device using an app like the BCA Tour Planner. With a solid handle on the avalanche problems we could experience, it's time to pull out a map and plan our tour for the day. Having recently skied Dead Elk Couloir, Joey was eager to get back up there and ski the new snow. How do you guys feel about option one? So that area to me feels a little bit like a no-go. All the recent snow, just the wind loading, everything being above us, especially in a group of five, you know, kind of all exposing ourselves to that type of terrain, I think is a little bit risky at this point. So. With a 45 degree couloir off the table, the group formulated a more conservative game plan. The new plan was to skin out from Bear Lake, follow the flat top trail up, and ski some low angle pow in the open trees. This option satisfied our need to avoid steeper slopes and gave us the opportunity to assess the snow conditions on the way up. Before we head out, we decided to quickly pull up our trip plan on Caltapo to ensure that we would be playing on lower angle slopes. With our plan input into the map, we can turn on the slope angle layer and see where our biggest risks will be. It looks like we will cross below a short 35 degree plus slope on our first run, and that our final run will be through prime avalanche terrain. Once we get out in the field, we will reassess the snow on the southeast face and maybe decide to push further east onto mellower slopes. Based upon our hazard today, I think that's a great option. Uh, understand. Thanks, guys. Yep. That's great. At the trailhead, we regroup and check that our beacons and BC Link group communication radios are functioning. 
Following the American Institute for Avalanche Research and Education's Beacon Check Protocol, the entire group turns on their beacons and reads off their battery levels. Next, everyone switches their beacons to search to verify that there are no renegade signals, and ensures familiarity with changing modes. The leader will now switch to transmit and walk the circle to verify distance readings. Finally, the entire group will switch back to transmit and the group leader will move 10 to 20 meters away. The group will spread out and pass the leader individually, ensuring that every person is transmitting as they go by. When the final person reaches the group leader, they will pause and switch their beacon to search, while the group leader switches back to transmit, ensuring that their beacon is also transmitting properly. Along the way, it is helpful to take the time and verify the conditions you read in the forecast. Here, Dane is using his probe to feel the various layers, as well as measuring the depth of the snowpack. As we continue to tour towards our final goal, we will stop and revisit our plan in light of any field observations we have made. This is an important time to check in as a group and ensure that everyone still feels good about our plan. With the uphill behind us, we regroup at the top of our ski run and review our final plan and regrouping point. Everyone is on the same page and it's time to do our final safety check. We check that our float trigger handles are ready and that our leg straps are on. Finally, we do a group radio check, ensuring our BC links are functioning and all on the same channel. Pause check. Pause check. Right. And now, the fun begins. Okay.